We're going to be replacing the ICC in my 2012 Ford Territory SZ. Now, this is not the SYNC 2 head unit. So this is a 2012. Um, there was a crossover between the Mark 1 and the Mark 2 territories where this unit looks the same. A couple of buttons are, are different um, in here, which is something to watch out for. And then there's the dual climate control to watch out for as well. Um, some of the later model territories had a couple of buttons in different places, didn't have the dual zone climate control, and this fascia was a darker silver. That's a SYNC 2 headset. Uh, head heads up display head unit display eight inch screen whatever you want to call it it goes by various names at wreckers and and auto recyclers so you make you need to make sure that you get the right unit so this one is a i suppose first version or sync one whatever you want to call it uh with the lcd screen um and you need to get this unit to replace it with. Uh, you can't just get the screen, but nobody usually just sells the screen. Um, they usually sell the whole unit together or like a replacement cord deposit screen. The rear of this looks like that with the BA and BF plug. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's the earlier version. I've got a few pictures of this unit side by, oh sorry, that unit side by side with the newer version unit. Um, and I can show you the plug differences and what to look out for between those two because they sent me the wrong one originally. So it's a pretty easy thing to replace. There's heaps of videos on replacing or removal of this unit. Basically, you start here. You um, There's two screws underneath here that you take the rubbers off, unscrew those, use one of those plastic tools to lift this surround off, then you pull this out, sort of goes in order, sort of from here out to there, and then you can get to, there's four ten, uh, eight mil screws, one, two, three, four in there, um, then you lift the top of this off with the plastic thing or your fingers, whatever you want to do, um, and there's two screws up there, and then the whole unit just pops out. So beware of the cables and things like that, but that's essentially how to do it. We're gonna go ahead and replace that now because my screen's buggered. It's a common problem. This screen is tested as good, or so they say, um, and hopefully we'll have our touch screen and reverse camera and controls all working again. Okay, the unit is out. Um, pay close attention to the plug here. It's a bit of a setup where it sort of ratchets in and sort of locks into place. So as you push the unit in, the plug sinks back into this plastic bit here. When you remove the head unit, make sure that the this plug comes out all the way flush and is square. Not on an angle or pushed back in a certain side or anything like that because you will have dramas when you when you go to put the new head unit in so make sure that the plug is all the way out and that it is square to itself one difference with my unit which is this one here is that it doesn't have these two plugs that plug and that blue one at the back you see mine has the space for it but it doesn't have anything in there. So I think that might be the navigation, but I can't be sure. Mine doesn't have navigation, so I'm hoping that it still works with all of the functionality, just minus the navigation. We'll see.
Okay, it's plugged in. Before we go any further, I'm going to test it. Well, that's a good sign. Okay, I think I might need to get that overridden um, at Ford. So that is like, uh, it's, it's going and, and recognizing the car. It's like an anti-theft device thing. It's like the passcode. Um, and yes, I was correct. It is the navigation unit. So, yeah. All right, we might have to go and see Ford about that, but it works. So that's fantastic. The reverse camera works. Excellent. Heat, yeah, cold. Brilliant, that all works. So I'm gonna put it all back together now. All right, after talking to a number of people on the Forescan community, they said it would be easier if I actually took the good screen out of the new head unit ICC because it's not coded to my car. This old one, the original one, as you can see, October, well, yeah, this was my original one. This one was actually coded to the car. So I've pulled the good screen out of that, put it, into this housing here now i just need to put it back together and put you know the better of these two air vents into there and then this whole unit goes back into the car and that should work fine without giving me the error um and i'll yeah assemble that whole unit as you know separately as well all righty she's all put back together now with the new or the replacement screen into the original icc so hopefully I wish I had a bit of a workbench to work on, but you know, here we are, nonetheless. Um, hopefully, we won't have that error anymore because it's the original radio. The original, it's got to do with the um, the BEM and all of that CAN bus lovely stuff. Um, but the screen, from what I understand, is its own unit. It's just a display, so it's just got a ribbon cable going to it. Whereas this is the thing that's actually locked to the car or, or VIN coded. All right. All righty. Let's, let's see what this does. That's a good sign so far. It's already kicking into gear. God, I sound like a real bogan, don't I? Ignition on, audio code error, gone away. It's even saved my radio stations still. Um, Oh, I don't have the antenna plugged in. Two seconds for that. Where are you? you have to listen to some amazing stories. But there have been few Look at that, it even connects to my Bluetooth all straight away. That is Ripper. The nav button. The nav button I don't think is actually going to work because it doesn't have nav. Always obey traffic, da 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 da, yep, yep, except. Oh, get out, it actually shows the navigation as well. Huh, considering the car was never fitted with it, I guess I'll just have to have a look. <laughs> 